Hi, um, this is a pulse width modulation circuit using a triple five timer IC. So first, I'll just briefly tell you what a pulse width modulation control signal is. PM, PWM of a signal or power source involves the modulation of its duty cycle to either convey information over a communication channel or control the amount of power sent to a load. Now here the load that we are using is an LED. So uh, the application that we are using PWM is to control the amount of power that we are sending to the LED. So you can see that it is blinking on and off. That means that we are disconnecting and connecting the power supply to the LED without any manual interference. We are doing it all automati automatically using a, a PWM controller. So the uh, simplest way to generate a PWM signal is the intersective method that uses only a sawtooth or a uh, triangular waveform which can be easily generated using a simple oscillator and a comparator. But in our application, we are not using a uh, comparator. Now, when the value of the reference signal uh, is more than the modulation waveform, the PWM signal is in the high state, otherwise it is in the low state. The components that we are using for uh, our circuit is, as you can see, diodes. Both the uh, components are of IN4001 capacitors, 1000 nanofarads and 10 nanofarads. Then we are using one transistor. The number is 2N2222 and the triple five timer IC of course that is LN triple five CN. This is the triple five timer IC pin details. This is the exact IC that we are using for our circuit. Uh, this is Bushka and I will be talking to you about the working of the circuit basically here. So as we can see when the power, when the circuit here is powered up, the capacitor will be initially in a discharge state. Thus the trigger that is the pin 2 will be low driving the output pin that is pin 3 to go high. So when the discharge pin goes high and ground the cycle does begin there. So if we take it a look th that way the high output will cause the C1 capacitor to be in a charge to be charged through the R1 and D1 path. Upon C1 voltage reaching 2 thirds of the voltage the threshold that is pin 6 will be activated and drive the output pin that is 3 to a low state. Discharge pin as I mentioned pin as, as pin 7 goes low. This time it takes for the C1 to charge depends on the position of R1. Since output pin is now low, the capacitor C1 will start to discharge through the D2 and R1 path instead. When the voltage when the voltage here in this case okay uh, when the voltage of C1 drops below one third of the voltage here, trigger that is pin 2 will be low driving the output pin to go high and discharge to go high and source to ground. The cycle again repeats itself to what it started. Over here as we can notice that doubling the value of C1 will reduce the frequency to half and tripling will reduce the frequency to one third and the cycle goes on. So this is the basic working of a PM. PMW circuit using a triple five timer. Now we will go through the waveforms of the circuit. Since I mentioned about the working in a theoretical aspect, here we can actually observe the waveforms at different different points. Like I have mentioned at pin number two, the trigger circuit, the waveform can be observed as such as this. This is the case when we have taken the capacitor as 300 nanofarad. Since we saw this a frequency of the circuit in a previous case when C1 was 300 nanofarad, it was comparatively lower to the case when I have now changed it to a C1 value as 100 nanofarad. As we can observe, the frequency has increased. So as we see that if we double the frequency that is C1 here, the uh, capa sorry, capacitance of the value, if we double it, the frequency reduces by half. If we tri triple the value of the C1 capacitance, the frequency reduces by one third time. Uh, hello, this is Akshita here again. Like I told you that in our application, we are trying to <laughs> control the power that has been sent to the LED. <laughs> what, I'll show you the waveform that we can see across the LED. Yeah, so this is the waveform that we have, uh, see across the LED. As you can, I'll just increase the scale so that it's more clear. Yeah. So this is the waveform that we see across the LED. 
See, as the pulse goes high and low, we are giving power to this LED and disconnecting it. Whenever it is high, that means we are giving some power, uh, power supply to the LED, so it is blinking. When it goes blue, it's, it means it's blinking and when it is not, it means it's off. So, uh, here we have a blinking LED using a PWM controller. That, uh, as you can see, we can vary the duty cycle of the signal actually by varying uh, the BRB or the potentiometer resistance R4. Right now, the duty cycle is, as you can see, half about 50%. So, it turns on and off at equal intervals of time. This is the working of the PMW, PWM circuit and thank you.